Hey guys, it's uh, PJ Lachman here for Mythborn247365. Hey, uh, I thought I'd do it on my iPhone today. Just uh, it's a little easier to hold and the camera set up on my um, home network. It always seemed a little fuzzy to me and um, I haven't figured out yet why. Um, I don't think it's something on the lens. I just got to check it. And until then I thought, why not go with something a little bit easier for you guys to see. These are short videos anyway, so I thought you'd enjoy it. Hey, a uh, little housekeeping today. So um, let's see. Um, first, I want to shout out to all uh, the folks who've been leaving such great reviews on the website and on Amazon. I really, really appreciate it. It's made a, a big difference for us in sales. Uh, it gives people a chance to understand that this is a good book. They can take their chance on it. And uh, also, it's just nice to have that kind of feedback from you, my fans. Uh, you know, like I said before, you're the reason I write. And I really, really uh, love having uh, the opportunity to um, give you guys uh, good, good writing. So um, thank you so much for, for doing that. Um, the second thing, uh, let's see, what other things I want to tell you guys. Um, uh, Baltimore Comic Con's coming up. I'm definitely going to attend. I'm not sure if we're having a booth there or not yet, but I know I'll be there at least. Uh, I'm just loving these cons, and I'm loving seeing how people are just showing off the greatest stuff ever. And, um, you know, I, I, I consider myself um, a local boy from Maryland, so I want to support the uh, local community of arts and crafts and, and, and all the different kinds of writing and comics and costumes and cosplay and gaming um, so you'll uh, probably see me wandering around um, and hopefully uh, you'll see some Mythborn signage and uh, maybe we can get a photo together or we can do a quick Instagram or a tweet or something together it'd be great I'd look forward to meeting you guys there and um, I'll keep you guys tuned as to what's going on that's in the end of September so it's a little ways away uh, lots can change between now and then so I'll just keep you guys uh, sort of in the loop on that um, also I officially started the production of uh, the storytelling interactive game for Mythborn. Um, I've been uh, writing up uh, sort of the templates on how it would work, uh, but I'm targeting the Amazon Alexa, and the Alexa will act almost like a uh, choose your own adventure game. Like remember that from back in the old uh, in the '80s, like Zork and things like that. So uh, pretty excited about that. Um, I'll let you guys know what's going on with that. It's a it's a process because the technology. Uh, it's not very difficult, but um, there aren't that many providers that are creating the right tech. And, you know, it's just, if you don't know this about video game development, um, if you, you're never going to pick the, quote, wrong tech, tech but um, if you, the choice of tech can really affect your production path. And so I wanted to be sure uh, we have enough information so that we can uh, make the right choices and you guys get the best product. Um Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, I want to talk to you guys about something called the Silurian Hypothesis. Now, uh, believe me, this connects to Mythborn eventually, but for now, just let me explain what it is. So, in February of 2018, there was a paper published by um, Schmidt and Adam, I believe. And uh, let me just double check that, because um, I don't want to get the names wrong, because they deserve the credit. Um, so, Gavin Schmidt and Adam Frank. Um, in the International um, Astrobiology Journal. They published a, 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 a product, I mean, I'm sorry, a paper called the Silurian Hypothesis. Now, what does it say? Well, they hypothesized that if you look for extraterrestrial life uh, out in the galaxy, um, the galaxy is so vast and the time frames are so ginormous the chance of seeing a civilization that's still in the radio frequency lifetime uh, that we are currently in right now and haven't gone completely digital or completely laser or completely some other communications method um, and are still emanating radiation in the form of radio waves, that uh, time slice is so thin compared to the galactic age that um, it would be really difficult to find evidence of other civilizations that are coexistent with ours. And what I mean by that is um, they're existing at the same time that ours is, and they're in the same level of, um, of, of uh, uh, progress 
uh, technological progress that we are. The fa those two numbers overlapping, we've been you know radio conversant for you know maybe a I mean we've been yeah maybe a you know a hundred years, and so um, is that right? Yeah, like not that long, um, eighteen hundred. So you know not that long, and so. Um, Maybe a little longer than that, but not that long. Um, and so the chance of, you know, two civilizations billions of years apart coinciding at the same time so that we could hear each other is, is uh, I mean, nothing's impossible in an infinite universe. Uh, but what you have to think about is um, we're not dealing necessarily with an infinite universe. Uh, when we're looking, we're dealing with a, a sphere of, of uh, radiation that we've emitted and someone else would have to be within that sphere uh, in order for um, us to hear them. And um, if you consider the first television signal, so this is like a stronger signal, uh, went out, I believe, in the first uh, few uh, Olympics in Berlin in 1943 or something like that. Um, you're looking at, you know, uh, 60 years plus 20 years, 80 years, uh, so let's say, give or take, 75 years of... Uh, 75 light years. So the diameter, our bubble, right, of, of um, information that we've cast out is about 75 light years um, in diameter. And so, as a result, something else would have to be within that 75 light year bubble and also be a radio uh, sensitive civilization that can either send or receive radio signals. They haven't progressed to, like I said, digital signal only or to lasers or whatever. Okay, so back to this, I just wanna explain that, so why that is such a big deal. But the Silurian hypothesis says, um, why are we looking way out there? The Earth is 4.5 billion years old, and if you were to look at how long humanity has been around, you know, it's uh, on the order of, you know, a, a few, uh, I mean, hominids, you know, maybe 3 million, 3.7 million years. Uh, you know, modern man, uh, maybe 190,000 years. I think that's a, the latest numbers around 190,000 years. Um, modern civilization, uh, you know, we can argue different numbers, but uh, certainly 10,000 years seems to be, uh, you know, uh, a number that's been thrown out there. Certainly, um, if you think of what <coughs> Egypt was, that was about eight, 7,000 years ago. Um, and so, uh, I mean, Gobe Gobekli Tepe has now been on Earth, and that's like 11,500 years old. But these aren't radio civilizations. These are just modern humans walking around. So what they, what they are projecting is that how many times could that happen? How many times could a civilization arise on a planet in the billions of years that we know the planet was around and we know the planet could support complex life for at least 400 million years. Now think about that. 400 million years is um, 400 times 999,000 years. That's the way I think, when I think of like deep stretches of time, 400 million doesn't sound big, but when I think of you know, 1 million years as being 999,999 years, all of a sudden I realize how big 400 million is. And when you think of that, 999,000, blah, 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 we're only that last 9,000, you know, or so. So, you know, maybe 10,000. So, uh, if, if you're an Atlantis believer, then maybe 20,000. But it doesn't matter. It's so, you know, it's so small. And so, um, you know, how many times in just 1 million years could a civilization rise and fall, potentially? How many times in 400 million years? That's the Silurian hypothesis. It says that we in fact may have had other civilizations that were technologically advanced that grew up on this planet and then either destroyed themselves through thermonuclear war or genocide or whatever. Um, and that fits the Drake equation for those of you who know the Drake equation uh, by Francis Drake that shows like what's going on, Frank Drake, sorry, that shows what's, you know, how, what's the chance of finding intelligent life out in the universe. And, um, and I'll go to that at a different time. But the point is that um, if you look at the Silurian hypothesis, and by the way, they named that after a Doctor Who episode uh, based on a fictitious race of uh, reptiles, um, dinosaurian people. Um, so the idea is that how many times could a technological civilization have risen 
and then faded away. How many times do they blow themselves up? And for those of you who watch National Geographic or other things and you've seen the Earth without humans, right, when, when we leave, how long would all this stuff last? Well, uh, probably about 10,000 years. After that, it's really hard to find anything in the geological record about uh, our, um, our uh, technolo technology. You'll find our bones. They'll know they're hominids. But um, plastic degrades, uh, you know, iron, rust, it's gone. Uh, cities disappear, literally disappear. Um, within 10,000 years, there's no, almost no trace. And within 100,000 years, there's nothing. There's nothing when it comes to technology that's going to last 100,000 years. Um, it, most of it will degrade back to the environment. And so, um, and then get recycled, right, uh, by the earth itself. And so, um, you know, finding technology that's more than 100,000 years old is virtually impossible. Um, and that number might be much smaller. It might be finding it over 20,000 years old is virtually impossible. Um, also, land masses move and oceans, you know, rise and fall. So um, since most people live near a coast or near water, uh, the chances of their civilization being submerged, uh, being droughted, being gone, being wiped out, or being underwater, frankly, right now, is really high. So the Silurian hypothesis says, hey, the hypothesis says, hey, the Earth could have been home to, you know, hundreds of civilizations that rose and fell and rose and fell. And uh, some may have left the planet. Some uh, may have died themselves out or killed themselves off. Um, we wouldn't know. The only way we'll know is to look in the geological record and see if there are any uh, anomalous readings when it comes to radioactivity, when it comes to boundary layers uh, between the different ages of time, uh, when it comes to certain geochemical processes that could be affected by um, the habitation of a carbon burning civilization like us. Um, in fact, there's an entire period um, uh, called the PEMT that is uh, where the, the temperature is like eight degrees higher. In fact, the results of that uh, temperature gain in our past is very similar to what um, the Anthropocene uh, is doing now, what we're doing now to the planet. So there's some interesting hypotheses there. Okay, that was a long conversation, but the reason I brought it up was this. Um, that's the basis, frankly, of Mythborn. So when you think about where our myths come from, when you think about what's going on, what I hypothesized was what would happen if there were a precursor? What would happen if there were a nanotechnologically advanced civilization that uh, lost its way, that survived for a while, uh, the nanotech um, being their form of magic, and then ultimately they disappear, but what's left behind is their myths, and their legends, and their deeds. And that is why I called the books Mythborn. And that's why I think you guys will really enjoy reading it, because, uh, and that's why I think people are enjoying reading, because there's a lot of really cool science hidden underneath the layers of what starts off feeling like a fantasy, but ultimately uh, is really a book about potentially about our past uh, and certainly a, uh, I hope, a vivid imagination of where uh, our legends from all cultures come from, whether it's the flood myths, whether it's Heracles, uh, whether it's Indra, uh, whether it's, you know, all the different religions of the world, they have these interesting, in my mind, culturally um, important myths. And what I wanted to do was bring those to life uh, in my books. So um, next week we'll talk about some more of this, uh, some more of my sort of cultural background and where I've drawn from for the books. In the meantime, uh, have a great time reading. Uh, always read. It's better than not reading. Uh, and if you have a choice in what you're going to read, I hope you choose Mythborn. Um, hit the like button. Um, I'm not sure where it is on this, but someone just told me to put my camera sideways so uh, that way I, I, I think I give off like a better view. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this this time. Let me know uh, in the comments if you want me to go over anything else. Uh, feel free to uh, shoot me a text on Facebook, uh, shoot me an Instagram, uh, tweet me out there, uh, and let's keep talking Mythborn. I can't wait to see you guys again, and uh, have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye.